You are a beginner hacker, or if you want to return to the early 2000s, a noob hacksaw, and you've been contacted by a compatriot in digital breaking and entering, the mysterious Bit, who serves as a guide for you from god knows where as you slowly rise up in notoriety among the hacker community. But what are Bit's motivations? What of the enigmatic and seemingly benevolent entropy group? Why are you even doing this anyway? Why are you listening to these people? And why is nobody stopping you? This is Hacknet, I'm Tiger, and this is a Hyper Review. Hacknet is a sim game that was released in August of 2015 by solo Aussie dev Team Fractal Alligator. This is an experience where the player has to use their logic, intuition and problem solving skills, along with some rather sophisticated task automation software, to hack into fictional remote machines and complete missions that have been assigned to them by a host of characters. Typically these missions include performing tasks like deleting data, snooping on someone's activities, making copies of coveted files, or stealing secret information. Although there's really only one way to achieve your goal, by hacking into the increasingly well defended machines, navigating their file system to find your target, and then performing the appropriate action on the target, you're given two interfaces to do this through, an old school DOS style command line interface, and a basic graphical interface, and you can combine your use of these interfaces at will. In fact, you're expected to do so in order to maximise your efficiency. This might all sound quite repetitive, limited and altogether boring, but the pacing is handled delightfully well. As one would expect, the difficulty of the game increases over time. The mission targets go from simply accessing a machine, to downloading a file, to deleting specific files and further, and the hacks become more complex as well, progressing from running a password hacking program, to needing to open ports with ancillary software, to having to use the machines you already have at your disposal to perform a shell overload to bring down a proxy, and again it continues to get more complex. Eventually you're having to run full port attacks, managing the RAM on your own machine to time their execution correctly after essentially DDoSing the machine's protection protocols before delving into your target's file structure to locate your goal and carry out operation, all while avoiding detection mechanisms and within the time limit set by your victim's tracing software. And it's weirdly exciting. Hacknet makes you feel empowered and important. You feel like you're doing good in a chaotic sort of way, and the only thing that can really stop you short of your own hubris is a better hacker, and really, is there a better hacker than you? Maybe. But not for long. I bet this is what Sombra from Overwatch feels like all the time. You might assume that because this is a game about hacking and you have to use the command prompt and all that, that it's relatively inaccessible to the standard person. But while the game does occasionally give you some extra rough challenges, you don't need any information that isn't given to you in the game before that point in time. The whole experience starts off with a really gentle tutorial, and as a general rule, it continues to hold your hand as much as you need it to without being overly simplistic, in the form of hints and reference sheets for commands. Although the player is required to be able to perform under the pressure of a time constraint and needs to have relatively strong problem solving and reasoning skills, the expectations of Hacknet are, in reality, no more demanding than the average puzzle game. It's merely the way that they're presented that people might find intimidating. Thanks in part to its minimalist presentation, Hacknet excels at other forms of accessibility as well. The user interface is simple and clean, and the colour scheme primarily makes use of high contrast colours that are safe for colourblind players. There's no real audio within the game except for some ambient music, and that can be switched on and off at will. There's the ability to store notes natively within the fake operating system in case you have memory issues, although this does take a toll on your fictional machine's RAM resource. And if you get overwhelmed by the trace timer and you need to have another chance at reaching your target, disconnecting from a machine and reconnecting again resets the countdown to its maximum. Diversity wise, there's not so much to analyse here. You never really see any of the characters you interact with, and because all of the communication is done via email and text files stored on remote machines, races, genders and sexualities are left largely up to the player to fill in on their own. Of course, some machines do have clues about their owners on them, half-written letters, scientific reports, backed up tax information, all of which is freely searchable, and all of which gives you interesting items of minutia about those you're helping or hacking. The fact that you're free to ferret around in the file system of the machines that you hack into and discover all of these little gems and eggs really helped when it came to playing this with ADHD. 
making an experience just open-ended enough while still providing goals and guide rails rather than railroad tracks helps keep the ADHD brain stimulated while still allowing the freedom required to metaphorically run in circles when needed. And the missions, which generally don't need to be completed in a specific order, are short enough that you're being given reward feedback at frequent intervals. Overall, this is a sim with a difference. It's a great way to test out your problem solving skills, your ability to complete tasks accurately under pressure, and how well you follow instructions from faceless, falsely named individuals at the other end of an email account. Basically, it's preparing you for the workforce. And even though it's not really what hacking is actually like, it's still great fun if you want to feel like you're Angelina Jolie in that movie from 1995, where she has like weird robot arm flirty times with Johnny Lee Miller thanks to a poorly secured TV station. Um, where was I going with this? I don't know. Go by Hacknet. It's good. Okay, I love you. Bye bye.